Alrighty, what's up guys, single player Nacho here. With Resident Evil 4's remake just around the corner, we gotta look at certain things that should stay in the original. These are a couple of mechanics or scenes that need some updating. Now this list can be described as nitpicking in one way or the other. Some would even call these complaints pretty trivial. I won't add too many things just because of the difficulty, but we should take the learning curve into account. I love Resident Evil 4 as it is, and I wouldn't want to change too much, so this is purely for fun. So without further ado, let's get to it. Changing the discs. No, I'm kidding. I'd actually take two discs in exchange for an open world RE game. That would be pretty cool. For the first change, the castle puzzle. I think we can all agree that this puzzle may just be the most annoying one in the game. Found in the castle section within Ashley's chapter, the puzzle is adorned with Salazar's insignia, and I'm assuming that the devs wanted us to piece this puzzle with that insignia in mind, but first timers may have had a really hard time without that hint. The puzzle itself has an easy solution, if you looked it up of course. Just a quick counterclockwise pattern will get that thing solved. But if you didn't know that, which was the case for most players, you'll be left trying to piece this thing together manually. This square-ass piece of plastic will be your doom. In the end, you'll be left with this jumbled up mess. It's okay, just walk away from the puzzle and you'll be able to restart it, right? That's not an option. The same mess you made is still there as you left it. A quick checkpoint restart should do the trick, but upon doing that you're back to square one of the area, and you'll have to start from scratch. Now I'm pretty sure this puzzle won't be back in the remake, as it is pretty outdated, and it just reminds me of something you'd find in a fixed camera RE game. But you never know. Rock Button Mash The button mashing sequences in RE4 brought lots of risk and extremely little reward. Actually, no reward at all. For example, all of the rock chases had a tiny, tiny window for a success rate. You'd rapidly press a button and then for half a second, you're supposed to press one of two button sequences really fast. It just seems archaic nearly two decades later, and no one likes dying for a simple button mishit. There are more examples of button mashing in boss fights, some more forgiving than others. God forbid you're one of those unfortunate souls who had a hard time with the Del Lago boss fights, only to mishit the button mashing at the very end of the fight. R.I.P. Island Wrecking Ball Scene Some things just aren't fair for Leon, and the Wrecking Ball Scene is one of them. You drop down to the level, and Ashley points out the cracked surface of a nearby wall. A quick cutscene, and then There's this the happens. I won't fault the game on this one too hard because this seems to be more of a technical limitation back in 2004, but it would be really annoying to spawn into an area and 5 to 10 enemies are already in your face. The remake shouldn't have this problem, at least not in the easiest difficulty. This sequence does happen far into the game so maybe the devs thought the player would be well equipped to handle the quick spawn in, but it seems kinda unfair. The exact same thing can be said about the Garador cage scene, which acts as an ambush within the castle section. RE4's main goal is to save the president's daughter, but it's also secretly all about treasure hunting. So that chest in the middle will have you running towards it, only to be greeted by a terrifying Garador, multiple Illuminados, and even crossbow Illuminados, all outside this extremely small enclosed space. It's a pretty quick death for newcomers, that goes without saying. Even if you weren't interested in the chest and the treasure inside of it, which again is completely optional and not a part of completing anything, you're still forced in there even with trying to avoid the area entirely. Although I don't think this will be back for the remake. Ashley commands. Now this is something that we'll no doubt see some updates to. Ashley Graham is a completely harmless character. She has no battle training or anything. 
She does know how to operate large construction vehicles, so that's great. But outside of wait, hide, or follow me, there's really not a lot that the original RE4 gives Ashley to do. It's not a bad or annoying mechanic, it's actually quite simple, and it works just fine with all the chaos that's happening in the game. There's still room for improvement in this mechanic, so I'm excited to see what the remake can have Ashley do. And please, give her a pistol or two, Leon. Timed Sequences This feature is a blast from the past, since this Super Mario days. Timed areas or scenes were made to add a bit more drama or difficulty during a boss fight, and they found their way into the original RE4. Whether it was during the U3 fight or with Krauser's Last Stand, I understand that if a bomb is about to go off, a timer can help add to the experience of panic, but it's not 100% necessary, and they just seem kinda outdated. I can see the need to add a timer at the very end of the game, with the entire island on the brink of collapse, but maybe get them out of the actual boss fights. The Krauser Dodge Speaking of Jack Krauser, the single most annoying enemy dodge on the first playthrough is Krauser's Matrix-like dodge. I'm trying not to add things on here that deal with difficulty, but I can definitely see why newer players would want to complain about Krauser's crackhead-like speeds. It's a bit too much for the first encounter, and especially on easy mode. I gotta say though, it looks freaking cool, and I wouldn't want the Matrix dodge to go away completely. These really were a problem until players found Krauser's ultimate weakness. Not a gun, not an explosive. I'll let Ethan Winters tell you what it is. A fucking pocket knife? Yes, a knife. Besides that, I can't wait to see these two go at it once again in the remake. Yellow herbs and ammo for guns we don't have. We're getting into nitpicking territory, and that goes for these next two changes. I'm also talking about these as a more experienced RE4 player that's probably on round 60 or something. When you're going for round 2 or 3 to get those infinite weapons, you might ditch some guns with conventional ammo. That's why finding the items that we no longer need, over and over again, can be just a tiny bit annoying. I'm talking about ammo or items for guns that we don't even have in the inventory. I kind of felt the same way about this same complaint in RE2's remake, so hopefully there's a way to balance out what spawns in depending on our inventory. This is what also makes Yellow Herbs completely useless after maxing out Leon and Ashley's health. They're simply not necessary to keep popping up, although they make great merchant trade-offs. But you're probably super rich in Pesetas by the time you don't need Yellow Herbs anymore. Gun stocks should connect. And again, another ultra nitpick. This really riled up my OCD while cleaning up my inventory case, which is an awesome minigame in itself. I hated that the TMP or Red 9 inventory icons wouldn't update upon connecting them to their stocks. These stocks would usually have an odd number of square spaces, and they just stick out compared to everything else. It's a tiny visual complaint that I'm pretty sure the remake will have no problem on fixing. Losing the jacket. The absolute most important thing that the remake must 100% fix is losing Leon's jacket. That thing looks very comfortable, and the Ganado village also seems pretty cold. Ah, it's freezing. So cold all of a sudden. So let's make it so Leon either finds his jacket at some point from that one fashion stealing Ganado, or keeps the jacket entirely. Obviously, this is a bit of a jokey addition, but it would be pretty cool to keep that famous bubblegum carrying attire for the entire game. You got a smoke? Got gum. Dog Maze. I think we're all kind of terrified to re encounter the dog maze in the remake. This place is hellish at first glance, and there's nothing but death within it and bloodthirsty colmillos. I wonder how many people first quit the game upon reaching this stage, or how many people dread it to this day. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm not saying to completely cancel out the dog maze section, just make it a little less familiar looking. Like every turn and torch looks exactly the same in the original, and that is, again, no real fault of its own. 
we're still talking about 2004 graphics here. I'm hoping that the remake adds a couple of signposts, maybe some tiny landmarks, so that we don't completely get lost while also being simultaneously hunted by ravenous dogs. Here's hoping. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below which changes you would most like in Resident Evil 4's remake. Which ones did you find the most annoying? Don't forget to like and subscribe for more horror lore, lists, and mysteries. Have an awesome rest of your day, and as always, stay single.